Okay, in this video lesson, what we're going to do is take a quick look at the Attribute Editor. Now, we have looked at it briefly already, though I am going to talk about it in just a little bit more depth this time around. But if you remember, back in our Channel Box Layer Editor lesson, yep. that's when we looked at it. Uh, just because we needed to see where we could find <laughs> all of our attributes for a given object. That's right. Let's go ahead and point something out, Zach. At this point, we've really wrapped up talking about all of the user interface elements that are visible in the application when you launch Maya. Right. We've covered everything that's uh, on the surface by default. From here on, we're going to start digging into things that aren't readily visible as soon as you launch it. You got to had to dig a little bit to find them. That's right. You got to just kind of get in there and <laughs> look through menus and stuff like that. Start routing around. So that's what we're going to do. So um, first of all. Where is this attribute editor? How can we gain access to it? Well, I'm going to start out by creating a NURBS object. There we go. Now, we've already shown you one way. We can go ahead and come up here, and from the status line, we can click this button right here. Bink! And there is our attribute editor. It comes to life with a menu bar, with tabs, with dial switches. Uh, you name it. It's Buttons, got it. knobs. Yeah. It's got everything. It's got it all. The bells and whistles. So anyways, there it is. Simple enough. Let's go ahead and switch back over to our channel box real quick. Another popular way of getting to the Attribute Editor is by coming up here to Window and then coming down to Attribute Editor. Well, there you go. Simple enough. Let's go ahead and switch back over to our channel box. Like everything else in Maya, there's like 15 ways to get to this. And as for the most popular way. The most popular. We use the hotkey combination, hot key Control A. And that brings us to the Attribute Editor and Control A again will toggle us out of the attribute. That's editor. all I ever use. Toggles us back to the channel box. And that's all I ever use as well. Yeah. It's very handy. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that as I jump back and forth between the attribute editor and the channel box, the attribute editor is actually docked inside of Maya. And it doesn't necessarily have to be docked. You can uh, you can actually have it floating in a separate window that you can move around your, uh, your screen or potentially onto another monitor. That's right. And that's the way I like to work. So how do we set that up? Well, I'm going to come up here to Window, come down to Settings Preferences, and open up my Preferences dialog. From inside here, I will be on the Interface category by default, and all I need to do is come down and find Open Attribute Editor, and where do I want to open it? In a separate window or in the main Maya window. I'm going to go ahead and select In a Separate Window, and I will continue working this way from now on out. Okay. Let's go ahead and hit Save, and there we go. Now, what happens when I hit Control A? Chink! I get a floating attribute editor, and trust me, this can be very, very handy, especially if you have two monitors, because then you can just drag your attribute editor over to another monitor, which there isn't one at the moment, <laughs> and uh, leave it open while viewing your channel box at the same time. Another thing that I like is the fact that my um, perspective view, or whichever view I'm looking at over here, doesn't suddenly become squashed or shrunk down in size. I like maintaining my view that I have available right here. Generally, when I'm open the attribute editor, it's just to go in to make a few changes and to jump out. So that is this is the way I like to work. Right. But now you know how to do it. Now, the attribute editor, it's divided up into, I guess you could say, one, two, three, four, five key areas. Starting with the, I'm just counting those <laughs> ones. <laughs> I got Starting you. at the top, we have a menu bar. Yeah. Then we have the tabs. Up underneath that, we then start getting into the actual node that is selected. Underneath that, we have notes, an area where we can leave our own notes for that object. And finally, we, at the bottom, we have a series of buttons that allow us to do different things. Sure. Now, there's a lot of functionality involved in the Attribute Editor. Oh, there's functionalities within functionality. That's right. I am not going to cover it all. Remember, at this part, this... Uh, yeah, in this section of the lesson, right. I don't know what I was thinking for a second. We don't want to go super in-depth. Right. We want to get you introduced to this so that you know where it is, you know how to access it, and you're not too freaked out the first time you see it. That's right. So let's go ahead and start out down here with the tabs. What are the tabs? Well, the tabs are showing us all of the nodes that are involved in the makeup of this sphere right now. And even though I selected my object... I'm looking at NURB Sphere 1 as my selected object over here, which is a transform node. Sure. We go into our attribute editor, and NURB Sphere 1 is not the active tab. Mm. So keep that in mind about the attribute editor. Don't always expect to jump into it finding the object that you think is selected as the immediately available one in the attribute editor. Right. I would need to simply switch over to NURB Sphere 1 so that I can gain access to the attributes for the transform node. Cool. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Okay, simple enough. So, 
what all attributes, or excuse me, what all nodes make up my sphere right here? Well, we have an input node, which feeds over to a shape node, which feeds over to an initial shading group node, mm -hmm. which is responsible for applying the paint, if you will, right. the material that's coming from our material node, which is the default in this case. In other words, when I hit 5, which switches my view panel over to a shaded view, that's my paint. It's just this gray, dull paint, if yeah. you will. Know. It's gray dull shader that's applied to my object. And the initial shading group is responsible for that. So um, here we go. Nerve Sphere 1. It's my transform node responsible for where the object is in the scene. Moving over. This is my input node. Or, or, I mean, shape, shape node, node. Excuse me. Gotcha. Nerve Sphere Shape 1. This is my actual geometry right here. Um, so you can see all the components involved. Moving on over. Make Nerve Sphere 1. This is my input node. This contains the construction history or the blueprint information required for the shape node to construct what we see in our view panel. Okay. Moving on over, we get the initial shading group. And remember, this is the node that's responsible for taking our, our um, shape node right here. Oh, gotcha. And having the material, which is Lambert 1 in this case, applied to it. Yeah. So it's the guy that's in charge of putting the paint on the shape node. That's the painter. <laughs> there you go. And that wraps up all of the nodes that are directly tied into the selected sphere right here. Right. So it's real nice being able to jump back and forth between all of these different nodes. Now let me go ahead and point out one more thing. Let's say, for instance, I'm going to come over here and open up my input node. And I can see all of these different attributes available for my, for my in input node. Sure. If I wanted to select that particular node only so that in my channel box over here, that's the only thing I'm seeing. Right now, I'm actually seeing two different nodes selected. I can come over here onto my Make Nerve Sphere 1, my input node, mm -hmm. come down to the Select button, click it, and look at that. That's the only thing that's selected right now is just my input node. Very cool. Well, what all nodes tie into my input node? Nothing. It is the starting point of the sphere. So take a look at how many tabs we have available in the attribute editor. Zero. Zero other, well, than, the one. One. That's other right. than the one. So we've got just this one. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. That Again, cool. I select this guy. The attribute editor will update in real time. So as you select between objects, for instance, if I was to, let's say, create a light, and we'll just do, a, I don't know, an ambient light real quick, and move this guy over, take a look at this. Attributes, completely different looking than what we see when we select the sphere. Right, so what attributes you have access to are going to be dependent on the type of, at of object you have selected. That's right. And um, that's really pretty much going to wrap up. With the exception, I do want to add one thing about the menu. While we'll be getting into a lot of these things a little bit later on, one of the things I find very helpful right now is this. Auto load selected attributes. You saw that as I was switching between objects over here, those that object, all associated nodes and attributes are being loaded inside the attribute mm -hmm. editor. I like to come up here and turn this off from time to time while I'm working. If I need to keep an eye on something, select another object, make some adjustments over here in my channel box, and watch how it's affecting the object that was selected to begin with. Cool. So let's come back up here to list it. Turn auto load selected attributes back on. And, of course, there's ways that we can come in here and just load selected attributes and things like that. Sure, if you want to do it manually. But that's right. So we'll just go ahead and turn this back on. You'll notice it automatically jumps over to the light. Awesome. Okay, so with that, that's pretty much all I want to talk about for the Attribute Editor for now. We're going to be working with this panel a lot as we progress further and further into this course. And as we do, we will begin talking more and more about the functionality that is available to you inside this window. So with that, that's going to wrap up this, this lesson. Thanks a lot, guys.